Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today we are going to study about the morphological stages of pterosclerosis. We have already studied about the etiology of pathogenesis of pterosclerosis. And today we are going to study about the morphological stages of pterosclerosis. So let's start. So first of all, the pterosclerosis starts with the formation of petty streaks or dots. Petty streaks or dots. So what are the petty streaks or dots? What are the gross and microscopic features? So grossly we can see the streaks. They are minute, about one millimeter, yellow in color plate macules, and that may coalesce into elongated lesions about one centimeter or more in length. They are minute, about one millimeter, yellow plate macules. And microscopically, we can see that the petty streaks are the lesions which lie under the endothelium and are composed of mainly the closely packed bone cells. The elong lipid containing elongated smooth muscle cells, smooth muscle cells, a few lymphoid cells, and a small amount of extracellular lipid collagen and proteoglycan are also present. So, in a nutshell, they consist of warm cell lipid containing smooth muscle cells, lymphoid cells, and extracellular lipid collagen and proteoglycan. So, this these are the picture of the of the petty streaks, these are this yellow region. In this yellow region, we can see the petty streaks, and this is the microscopic feature. In this, we can see this is the endothelium. This is the endothelium, and under the endothelium, we can see these white areas are the lipid laden or the closely compact foam cells. We can also see some lymphoid cells. And also, this is the media consisting of smooth muscle cells, and this media or this smooth muscle cell can infiltrate into this area. Also, we can see there are a lot of extracellular lipids and uh, uh, collagen and proteoglycans. So, now these petty streaks, what are the important points regarding these petty streaks? So, the first one is that they are harmless, but, may, but they may be a precursor lesions for the formation of atherosclerotic plaque. They are harmless, but they can be a precursor lesion. The second one is that they do not cause any significant flow disturbance in contrast to the atherosclerotic plaque, and thus, as we already discussed, they are harmless. The third point is that, that they arise early in their life, and they may be present in most of the teenagers as harmless lesions. So now when these petty streaks are converted into atherosclerotic plaque, so what are the gross and microscopic features of atherosclerotic plaque? We will discuss it. So let's start the atherosclerotic plaques. They are also known as the fibrous plaque, fibrofatty plaques or the atheroma. Fibrous plaque, fibrofatty plaques or the atheroma. So the gross features of the atherosclerotic plaques are that they are white to yellow raised, raised lesions. The second one is that this about the size is that they may range from about 0.3 to about 1.5 centimeter in diameter, but they may coalesce to form larger lesions about 10 centimeter or 15 centimeter in diameter. The third point is that thrombus may superimposed on the ulcerated plaques, and this thrombus may impart a red brown color to this white or yellow atherosclerotic plaque. The third one is that the atherosclerotic plaques are patchy. They are mainly present in wall, when present only in a portion of a given arterial wall, and on cross section, we can see that lesion appears as eccentric. For example, this is the artery. So, this atherosclerotic plaques may be present in a portion of the arterial wall. For example, maybe there, there, or there, and this impart a eccentric appearance to this atherosclerotic plaque, which we will see in a few minutes. Here we can see this atherosclerotic plaque. This is a atherosclerotic plaque, not a fibrous plaque. This is a atherosclerotic plaque. And here we can see the ulcerated atherosclerotic plaque. And when this ulcerated, uh, and when the thrombus is superimposed on this ulcerated atherosclerotic plaque, it imparts red-brown discoloration to the plaque, and here is the 
ulceration of the sclerotic plaque with overlying thrombus. This is a red brown, brown appearance of the sclerotic plaque having a thrombus. This is the picture of the sclerotic plaque which appears as eccentric as we have already discussed. This is the portion of the artery which uh, involves the thyrosclerotic plaque. And what are the different portions of the thyrosclerotic plaque? So, the different portion of the thyrosclerotic plaque consists of fibrous cape and the central pore. We will discuss in detail in a few minutes. So, before but before it, we will discuss about the microscopic feature of the thyrosclerotic plaque. So, microscopically, the thyrosclerotic plaques consist of three principal components. The first one is the smooth muscle cells, macrophages, and the T cells, i.e., the cells contain, including smooth muscle cells, macrophages, and the T cells. The second one is the extracellular matrix containing collagen, elastic fibers, and a lot of proteoglycans. The third one is the lipids in the form of intracellular and extracellular lipids. So these are the three principal components of atherosclerotic plaque, the cells, the extracellular matrix and the lipids. The fourth important point about the atherosclerotic plaque is that the periphery of the lesions shows neovascularization, i.e. the proliferating smooth small blood vessels. Here we can see at the periphery that there is neovascularization formation of small blood vessels at the periphery of the atherosclerotic plaque. Also, there the internal and the external elastic membranes are attenuated. Also, the media which is deep to the plaque may be attenuated or degraded and may exhibit fibrosis secondary through smooth muscle atrophy and loss. The media which is deep to the plaque is may be attenuated or show fibrosis and this fibrosis secondary through smooth muscle atrophy and the loss of due to the loss of smooth muscle cell. Now, as you already discussed, the components of the plaque it consists of fibrous cape, central necrosis, and the shoulder. We will discuss each one of these in detail. So, first of talking about the fibrous cape. For example, this is the artery, and this is the atherosclerotic plaque. So, this portion, this portion, is known as the fibrous cape. And what is this fibrous cape? It is a superficial fibrous cape composed of smooth muscle cells and relatively dense collagen. This portion consists of smooth muscle cells and relatively dense collagen. And this portion, this portion is known as a central necrotic core. Now, what is central necrotic core? It is a, it is deep to the fibrous case and is a necrotic core containing lipids and this lipid is, may, uh, is mainly in the form of cholesterol and cholesterol eaters, necrotic debris, the lipid latent macrophages and smooth muscle cells which are mainly in the form of sperm cells, the proteins in the form of fibrin, thrombus and other plasma proteins and the cholesterol, the extra cellular cholesterol which frequently makes the form of crystalline aggregates that are washed out during the routine tissue processing leaving behind the empty cholesterol clefts. So what are the components of necrotic, the central necrotic core? The lipids which mainly in the form of cholesterol and cholesterol eat, uh, esters, necrotic debris of different cell types, macrophages and smooth muscle cells, fibrin and other plasma protein thrombus and the cholesterol clefts. The cholesterol clefts. So what are what are cholesterol clefts? These are the cholesterol that are washed away during the routine tissue processing per microscopy and they can be seen as the cholesterol clefts of empty spaces. The third component of the plaque is in the palm of shoulder. What is shoulder? So where this cape and the visual wall meets, this area is known as the shoulder and it is more cellular area containing a lot of macrophages, T cells and a smooth muscle cells. These are the components of the plaque, the fibrous cape, the central necrotic 
core and the shoulder and their sub components i.e. what are their composition. So this is the picture of the atherosclerotic plaque. Here we can see this is the fibrous cape and this is the central necrotic region. Here we can also see this, this area which is an attenuated smooth muscle cells and there may be fibrosis as we have already discussed due to the atrophy of smooth muscles or due to the loss of smooth muscle. Here we can also see the attenuated elastic lamina. This is the attenuated elastic, this is the normal elastic lamina and here we can see the attenuated elastic lamina. Also we can see the calcification, the calcification of the atherosclerotic plaques, this is the calcification and these are the neovascularization as we have discussed at the periphery of the atherosclerotic plaque. These are the neovascularization. These are the cholesterol clefts as we have already discussed which are formed due to the processing of the tissue for the microscopy and these are the palm cells. These are the palm cells and these are all are the cholesterol clefts. So these are some pictures of the atherosclerotic plaque components. Now coming towards the complication of the atherosclerosis. Mm. Now when this atherosclerosis, atherosclerotic plaque is formed, so what are its complications? The first one is the stenosis of the medium sized vessels and this results in the impaired blood flow and thus ischemia of the organ or the artery of the organ involved. And this typically occurs when the vessel is approximately 70 percent occluded and this can lead to the peripheral vascular disease for example of the lower extremities for example the medium sized artery of the lower extremity which is the popliteal artery this can also lead to the angina when this stenosis occurs in the coronary arteries and this can also lead to the ischemic bowel disease when the mesenteric arteries are involved. The first complication is the stenosis of the medium sized vessel. The second complication is the form of acute plaque chain and this acute plaque changes may be in the form of rupture or fissuring of the atherosclerotic plaque and this rupture or fissuring expose the highly thrombogenic plaque constituent and thus promote the formation of thrombus. The other acute plaque change is in the form of ulceration or erosion of the plaque and this also expose the highly thrombogenic subendothelial basement membrane to the blood. These both, these both rupture or pressuring or erosion or the ulceration results in the thrombosis. This may result in the thrombosis which in turn results in the myocardial infarction in the coronary arteries involved or stroke in the middle cerebral artery involved. And this both can also result in the embolization which in turn results in the atherosclerotic emboli characterized by the cholesterol crystals within the embolus. These both rupture or erosion can lead to either thrombosis or embolization of the atherosclerotic plaque components. We will discuss about the acute plaque changes of the atherosclerotic plaque in a, in a more detailed video but for the shortness, for the sake of shortness, you will discuss only some important points of the acute plaque chain in this lecture. The third acute plaque change is in the form of hemorrhage into the theruma and this can expand the volume of uh, atherosclerotic plaque further complication, further increasing its complication, further increasing its complication. Now, this is the picture of the ulcerated atherosclerotic plague. Here we can see this ulcer, ulcer and when this ulcer exposes the highly thrombogenic material, the thrombus is formed and this is the picture of the same ulcers containing a thrombus and this thrombus has occluded the arteries. This is thrombus and this is the ulcerated or the fissured atherosclerotic plague. Now the third complication of atherosclerotic plaque is in the form of weakening of vessel walls which may result in the aneurysm for example of the abdominal aorta. Formation of aneurysm. The fourth one is in the form of the calcification of plaque and if this calcification occurs this will lead to the hardening of the arteries and can lead to the hypertension or other stroke or ischemia like symptoms.